Chronic obstructive pulmonary disease is exceedingly common and it surprises most students that the diagnosis is made almost entirely on inspection with some percussion. The patient's posture is often very characteristic. They sit in what's called a tripod posture, which Jeff is demonstrating, where they have their hands on their knees and they're strutting their thorax so that their scalene muscles can yank the rib cage up and down. In fact, while they stay in that posture, they can develop a dermatitis on their thighs that's called Dahl sign, D-A-H-L. What we might also notice is that the patient might have flaring of the alienase. They might be purse breathing. When they breathe out, they go. They might have hollowing of the supraclavicular fossae. They look like little cups and can hold water. The sternocleidomastoid muscles can be quite hypertrophied. And an important sign is if you looked at the trachea, or rather at the Adam's apple, every time they breathe, their Adam's apple would descend significantly. That is called inspiratory descent of the trachea, and it comes about from the fact that the normal diaphragm is like a dome, and when it contracts, it flattens out like so. But in a patient with COPD, the diaphragm is flattened to begin with from the hyperinflated lung, and when it contracts, it winds up pulling on the taut pericardial sac and thereby pulling on the trachea so that with every breath, the trachea does this number. Not to be confused with the tracheal tug, which is another sign where when you pull up on the trachea, with every beat of the heart, the trachea seems to be doing this, and that's a sign of an aneurysm. Other signs of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease are a very prominent sternal angle or angle of Louis, and especially when you look at the patient in profile, you might see a very exaggerated thoracic kyphosis, an increased AP diameter, you will also see hollowing under the clavicle. And you might notice that the subcostal angle, the angle formed by the lower ribs coming together, instead of being an acute angle, is actually greater than a right angle. In addition, the patient might also have a little groove here, almost like an hourglass groove running across here, that is called Harrison's sulcus. And again, it comes about from the diaphragm no longer contracting like this, but instead contracting like this and pulling the rib cage in. And that is also the genesis of a sign called Hoover sign, where normally when you and I breathe in, our subcostal angle widens. But in a patient's COPD, the subcostal angle might actually narrow as the flattened diaphragm yanks the two halves together. The preceding program is copyrighted by the Board of Trustees of the Leland Stanford Junior University. Please visit us at med.stanford.edu.